My grandfather has a knack for storytelling. I spent much of my early childhood at his home in Nanaglo, an aging coal mining town in western Pennsylvania, listening to tales from his youth. I have heard some of his stories so many times that I could recite them in my sleep. It was not until years later that I realized how profound some of his stories were, or how much of an impression they had made upon my conscience. His recounted histories have had the biggest impact on the way I perceive the rights of laborers around the world. My grandfather worked his first day in the coal mine at age 14. Before he was even able to finish middle school, he found himself on his hands and knees laboring beside his father and older brother for wages that left his family indebted to the coal company. It is in this scene that many of my grandfather's stories are set. There's the story of how his family was cast out of their home by the coal company because his father had attended a union rally. The account of how the coal mine operator didn't provide the needed material to prevent mine explosions unless the mine inspector was arriving. Or the time my great-grandfather had a stroke in the mine and the manager told my grandfather to put him in a shed and go back to work. These personal accounts of my grandfather's childhood form the foundation of my belief in the basic rights of laborers. I will probably never have to work in a coal mine or any other dangerous occupation. I was lucky enough to go to college, something my parents and grandparents never had the opportunity to do. My education will allow me to work at a job where I can utilize my mind instead of straining my back. But I am not naive enough to think that I am above anyone else in this world. Most workers in the United States are not subjugated to such ill treatment anymore, but laborers across the globe are still suffering under the yoke of abusive employers. Garment workers in Bangladesh are threatened by the possibility of burning alive in prison-like factories. Miners in South Africa must suffer through painful silicosis and early mortality to support their families. And laborers at lead smelters in South America must live with the debilitating effects of lead poisoning in order to feed their children. It is through the lens of my grandfather's history that I view these events. No employer should be able to take advantage of their employees' financial desperateness and no worker should have to sacrifice health and safety for employment and sustenance. This, I believe, 